Every minute, every day, data is collected through our phones, computers, cars, and other devices. Data that helps us grapple with some of the world's biggest challenges. But at what price? A new PBS documentary, The Human Face of Big Data, deals with how massive amounts of information about us and our world are being collected and analyzed. We're now collecting exabytes and petabytes of data. And we're looking through that data set using incredibly powerful algorithms to see what we would never see before. Every powerful tool has a dark side. Every last one. Rick Smolin is the film's executive producer and author of the book on which it's based. And Jay Walker, a leading figure in the film, is chairman of Walker Innovation, a company that puts big data to work and curator of TEDMED, an annual summit on health care. Good morning to you both. Morning. Morning. Rick, let me start with you. Um, you guys describe this as the nervous system for the planet. What do you mean? Well, a lot of us think that we're, all of us with our smartphones and our Google searches and all the things we're doing in the course of our day, that we're watching this sort of growth of a planetary brain. Imagine if you touched your finger yeah. to the stove, but you didn't know you'd burnt it for a week. Yeah. Now we have this real-time feedback loop that the human race has never had before. So it, it's, there are so many areas where this world of big data is allowing us to pinpoint the problem and solve it in a much more efficient way. One of the things that was so interesting, Jay, there have been some remarkable advancements when it comes to the healthcare field. And in your film, you talk about how doctors are now able to predict the onset of potentially deadly infections in premature babies. I think that's so extraordinary. Tell us about that. Well, it's turned out that we are data. And at the molecular level, at the cellular level, all that information is there. An infection in your body is just a change in the data of the cells. It's just a new data set. That's all cancer is, a cell with different data. Now we're able to start reading that data set in the cell, in the microbiome, in viruses, and for the first time, we can not only see it before it becomes big, but we can start to intervene and change it. Which has profound implications for medicine. Well, for example, you have dozens of tumors, cancerous tumors all throughout your body, mm -hmm. but they're tiny and small and most will never grow and kill you. But every drop of blood contains the fingerprint of every cancerous tumor in your body. Mm -hmm. So imagine a world of cancer where we're not smashing breasts and mammograms, but reading molecules and cells to find out how many different tumors do you have and how old are they. Uh, Rick, let me ask you the potential to help with social causes, too. This is an interesting aspect, like world hunger, civil unrest, as well as responding in real time to disasters around the world, I think is so fascinating because you have the access to all this information now. Well, it gets back to that same idea of us becoming human sensors. In the uh, terrible, terrible earthquake in Haiti a few years ago, it turned out it was actually ordinary citizens on the street that became sensors telling emergency re relief workers, we need water here, we need this church has fallen down. And what's so interesting about this is that instead of us feeling like this big data is taking over our lives, we're each now becoming players in this sort of dynamic, real-time network system. Jay, how are cities, I mean, we talk about how uh, the response to an earthquake here, but how can cities use this information, and are they already? Well, cities are using big data all the time. There are cities using it in traffic control. The yeah. police are using it in crime prediction and crime response. Look at the issue of water cleanliness up in Michigan. Yeah. Big data is a way to constantly monitor the water. If you're looking at the world of data, you're looking at the world of information. That's almost everything that isn't physical. The industrial world is the physical world. The data world is everything else. Uh, let me ask you, though, there are going to be some people who are going to say there's always got to be a downside. Well, of course. You explore this. Rick, t tell us about some of the things that you found. Well, you know, you know I, I think if someone had walked up to you 10 years ago and said, um, could I plant a little device on you that would tell me who you've spoken to today, what you're curious about, what books you've read, <laughs> what money you would have spent, you, you would have said, are you kidding? There's no way right. in hell I'd let anybody put a device like that on me. And now we line up and sleep in front of the Apple store for two days to pay $800 yeah. because it's so convenient, because it helps us navigate our world. So. As Jay says so eloquently in the film, you don't get one side without the other. When there's a new yeah. tool, it can be used for good or evil. And, yeah. and I think that what we're trying to do with this documentary is start this sort of global conversation about who owns our data, what are they doing with it. Yeah. Should we, I think that it should be opt in, not opt out. Mm. Okay. All right, so interesting. Rick Smull and Jay Walker, thank you both so much. Really thank interesting. You. Glad to be here. The Human Face of Big Data is currently airing on PBS stations and online at curiositystream.com.